Hello everybody. So this video is about how customize your variability chart. As I said last video about how to perform a variability chart, this is one of the best graphs that Jan provides to us because you can understand uh, a lot of different things about your process. So to, to record this video, I have here uh, two different variabilities. They, they have the same information, the same groups about our processes, but the, the response variable is different. So what we have here? We have uh, 36 parts collected from different days, different shifts, from different machines, and here we have the parts. So if you uh, see this, if you observe this, you can see that we have three parts for each machine, for each uh, shift and machine, for each machine, shift, and each day. So one of the first things that we can do here to customize it before copying and paste in our report is uh, to connect those little points. So how, how can we do this? Uh, here, every single graph that we perform in Jump, we will have these buttons. So this triangle, this red triangle, this red button here, you can click, left click or right click and you will have a lot of different options that you can run during your analysis. So the first thing that we usually do when we are trying to understand our data is connecting cell means. So I just connected all those three little dots for each combination of uh, groups or subgroups that I have so I can understand how is the variation within the subgroup. My subgroup here is part, is what I, I, I'm interested of and so how is the variation for parts compared to the variation between machines, between shifts and between days. So another, another thing here before I, I start in doing some things is that I have two variability charts here. If I press, let, let me take off this connect cell means, if I just press uh, the, the control key on my keyboard, I will perform the connect cell means on both graphs. So let's pay attention. I just press it right now, the control key, and I will select the connect cell means. And both of the graphs will be connected by those three little dots. I, I still have the control key pressed and I, I will minimize, I will diminish this graph so I can change both graphs uh, at the same time. So this is very nice when I have a lot of different graphs. I can't, uh, I can spend less time doing this. So here we can see that we have some different variation for each shift. The, the parts for, from that came from the morning uh, are having a different mean compared with the parts that came from the afternoon. So I can, I can add those means. So I, I have some options here, for example, show group means, show grand mean and grand median. So let's, let's work on this. Show group means. I will click here and jump will show me this little window. So day shift and machine. Do you have the mean? Do, do you want the mean for each one? Yes, I want. So I will have here some lines, some colorful lines like the, the brown one is the mean for the days, 
the purple one is the mean for the machines and the green one is the mean for the shifts. If I want, I, I, I'm gonna use this uh, second variability to show uh, a different way. So if I want the mean uh, of the shift, only the shift mean, so I can just select the shift mean and I will have the mean for each shift, okay? So let's take off this, show group means. And now I will add to this graph the grand mean, the mean of my study. So now I can know I, I have this 98.94 uh, is the mean of the 36 parts that I measured. Uh, if I want the grand uh, median, I also can have this, but I don't have the number here. So this is something very, very interesting. If I want all the single details, all the single statistical details or uh, better than this, uh, mean, standard deviation, confidence intervals, errors, I can select here in a quantitative analysis, I can select here variability summary report. So I have every single combination of this graph. I will have the mean, the standard deviation, the components of variance, the standard error mean, the lower and upper 95% of confidence, minimum, maximum, range, median, and the amount of observation. Okay. So uh, another very interesting thing that I can use here is uh, about the quantitative, quantitative analysis when I, I want to know where is the biggest variation of this study. This for me as an instructor, as a Six Sigma uh, instructor is one of the best things, information that we can have when we are studying our process because I collect some data and I want to know where is the biggest variation. We can have an idea here, for example, the, the variation between parts is very big. Here we have this variation between shifts. It's very big, but how big is it, right? So I can select here this variance components function. I'm gonna choose nested here because it's not a cross study. We are not talking about uh, MSA. We are talking about COV. We, talk, um, we are talking about uh, independent parts. So I'm gonna use nested and jump will calculate for me where is the variation? So we have some statistical details about the calculations here and here we have the result. This result I can order, I can sort, sort by column, the percentage of total. And now I, I know that 78.9% of all the variation that I had here is coming from part. Let's see how big is the variation between shifts here, from shifts. So variance components nested. And now I have 72.2% of the variation of the total variation is coming from shift. This is a very, very important information when you are analyzing your process. So let's minimize this to focus on the customization of our variability. Another thing that I can run here, let's, let's work with this one. So I will take off the grand mean. And I, I'm, I'm gonna put here the spec limits on this graph. So I can double click here on this Y axis here and uh, open a window will be open here and everything that I can perform, that I can change, that I can customize about my y-axis 
is here all the settings for example the scale of this the 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 axis the the increment the font the the label row and the reference lines so here i'm gonna put my reference line so 98.9 is the lower specification limit i'm gonna change the black from black to blue here and i'm gonna add and the upper specification limit is 99.0 so this is our upper specification limit i'm gonna change for blue and add the moment that i did this i have the lower specification limit here and i don't have the upper specification limit because my graph is going until 98.98 .98 and my upper specification limit is 99 so if you see this glove here this little hand if this little hand is uh, like this in a vertical position you can just click and drag here and you will change the uh, the scale of this graph so i just changed here to appear the specification limit to show the specification limit i also can do this specification limits as a range so i can allow range and i'm gonna put here 98.9 as minimum value and 99 as max value i can write here uh, spec limits I'm gonna change for blue and I will add this. I'm gonna take off these two and now I, I have a preview here when I see how it will be uh, showed. So now I have a different way on how to show the uh, spec limits of my graph. Very good. We are covering almost everything that we can do in a variability chart but we cannot forget how to customize the, 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 the variability for some specific situation. For example, this one. I know that uh, my biggest variation is between shifts but I, I would like to have another graph uh, to explain this better to my management, to, uh, to put this in a report, uh, to be more clear about where is the variation. So I can go there in the right, uh, in the red button, here, redo, relaunch analysis. So I'm gonna do this. I want a variability chart for the Y2 and i want only about shift the y2 and shift if i run this i will have a, var a variability chart only about the shift the, all the 18 parts that came from the morning and all the 18, 18 parts that came from the afternoon i can connect them and I will have a bar here. All these bars, if you pay attention here, all these points that I'm selecting here, they are select there on the other graph. So uh, what more we have now here? The standard deviation graph. So these two little points here, they are the standard deviation of those points that we have here within this bar. If you don't want this, you can just go there in the red button and take off this standard deviation chart. Okay, so this is a very interesting way to present your data, to present your results, and that is more. You can, you can perform this as well. Let's put two different situations. Uh, in our variability chart shift and machine now i have i have these four bars this one is for chinese machine in the morning the french ma machine in the morning the chinese machine in the afternoon and the french machine in the afternoon 
So you can change this dynamically and this is very, very nice. So let's do this. If I select machine and drag uh, on shift, I will just change the position in the graph. So now I can see that all the parts that came from the shift that was in the afternoon, they are uh, smaller than the, the, the parts that came from the morning shift. And we can see here that the variation that is being generated by the Chinese machine is a little bit bigger than the variation that is coming from the French machine. The, the smallest variation is about the French machine in the morning. So you can just change this and you can see uh, how is the variation behaving uh, in your data. Okay? If you perform the variance components here, you will have a different graph. We will have this within number here, within value. This within means that 15% of your total variation is within those bars. So everything that you let uh, off this graph, you took off this graph, is representing a, an amount of variation. And this variation is uh, called within variation. And now, during these calculations, we have 83.80% of the total variation being between shifts. So, this is how you can perform uh, your variability to, to get uh, better uh, reports. So, I hope you enjoyed this video and see you on the next one.